This is part two on front half and the top fuel dragster. Okay, so we've got this thing up on the jig table, but I haven't had a chassis quite like this one on here. Now they're all different. Some of the widths are different, whatever you wanna say, but the thing that has to happen here is we gotta establish a ride height in the back. Now this is gonna simulate what it's like when it has a rear end in it and it's on a set of tires. So this is the height that I wanna have regardless of how wide these frame rails are. But I have a problem. It's not sitting down all the way. These frame rails are in just a little bit from what uh, we've built in the past. So I'm gonna give this thing uh, a haircut in the center because this is a one piece section. So it's only good for that width. So if I give this thing a haircut in the center and slot these holes out, on each side, then I'll have that adjustment to go in and out and still have the same ride height that I wanna achieve. Well, here comes the old Harbor Freight cherry picker in again. So I'm gonna unbolt this uh, ride height fixture off of the jig table. And then I'm going to, I'll probably I'll put some blocks underneath this thing because this thing leaks off and the next thing I know, it'll probably be on the floor. But anyway, so I'll throw some blocks under it and we'll get it all done. I'll get this thing marked in the center, and then I'm gonna mark about how much I wanna take off each side. I'm thinking if I have an inch, inch and a quarter off each side, then that's gonna give me that flexibility to move it left or right. I saved my money over the years to buy this saw. It's a hem saw, 120. The actual blade uh, runs backwards, and man, I'm telling you what, it's the best damn band saw that I've ever bought. And I'm not plugging for them or anything like that because I had to buy this damn thing at full price but man, does it work well. Maybe uh, they'll catch on to this and we can sell some of these things at a good price for everybody. This here is my old Herco. Now I have two of these machines and this is the first time I've used this one. This thing is cherry. I mean, it looks like it was just lost in time, put in a corner and nobody got to play with it. So anyway, I'm gonna use it today. It's just as the same thing is using like a regular bridge port. You can use it in manual mode, but you can also program it right at the machine if you want to do simple operations, a circle, a bolt hole pattern, things like that. But man, it works so well. You know, it's cool too is that when you have like, you know, digital readout and that kind of thing, I know that all these bolt holes are on six inch centers. So I can just buzz right straight over to six inches and drop that thing down and, and open that thing up. So I open them up a half inch each direction. So I'll have a... Uh, you know, good adjustability. So we'll flip this thing around and we'll do the other side. But hey, I wanted to show you something that an old machinist, you know, always told me. Now this metal's pretty tough. Anyway, when you're looking at the chips themselves and when you're, you know, machining uh, steel, take a look at your chips, what they look like when they're coming off. Now you can see here, that little black guy right there. There's one there, maybe a couple here and there, but see, I got impatient here. There's more. That just tells you that you got the feed or the speed going too fast and those chips are coming off hot and that's how you ruin uh, good cutters. So just a little bit of a note there from your old buddy Rob. So we'll knock the edges off these things, make sure that they're nice and flat and all that kind of stuff. But I wanna show you this sander. This thing is so cool. It's, it's a bitch and belt sander. Now this thing will turn sideways and you can use it as a belt sander on its side or it has these radiuses here that at the top. So like if you're notching a, a pipe or something like that and you got a three quarter pipe, well, there's one right there. You got a one inch one, there's another one. So anyway, it uh, is very versatile. They're not cheap, but like, again, if you wanna do things right, you gotta spend a little money on some of your tools. So let's get these things up underneath here. So how I'm gonna do this is I've got an alignment string that I know is the dead nut center of my table that goes from one end to the other. So after I get these things down and get these pieces clamped onto the rails themselves, then I'll be able to slide this thing back and forth and get the chassis lined up to uh, my alignment string. And keep in mind, I've yet to chop on this car yet. All I've been doing is you know changing fixtures and trying to make them to where they're adjustable. So now I'm trying to bolt this thing down onto my fixture plate. Well, guess what? Yeah, right? The damn clamps are too long now. So you gotta give them a haircut. Haircut, problem solved. You know, haircuts fix a lot of things. Sometimes it takes an ugly guy and makes him look a little nicer. And sometimes when you do it to metal, it just makes it work a little easier. So we got our clamp down, we've got it bolted down, and now we need to see if we have 
something that's level. So let's take a look. Yep. The old jig doesn't lie. So these lower rails are perfectly level. That's a great starting point. And what we'll do now is we'll come from this center location on this motor plate and we'll use a plumb rob down here and we'll get it centered on the table. It's that easy. So just to make sure everything's cool, I'll go ahead and take a, a steel ruler and I'll run it down to the bottom and I'll use my, uh, my laser leveler and I'll come through here, see exactly where we're at, check the other side. Yep, it's right on the money. It's not a liar. Everything back here looks great. So we're moving up to the driver's area. This thing is showing level to down a tenth. Well, that's not like I like to have mine. I'll just say that. I would think that this thing has sagged over the years. And so we're going to fix all that. But with all this sag and everything, some of my tooling and stuff is not going to work underneath the driver's area. So we're going to have to reconfigure all this. So I've already chopped down my adjusters. You can see how much of the metal I've taken off here. And I have a clamp set up that pivots. Uh, basically, it has a muffin clamp on it. It's a chunk of uh, tubing, but it pivots on that ball. And that's got to go in between that stand and that frame rail. Well, guess what? It is not happening. So back to the Herco. Now you could take a grinder and grind that thing all down and everything, but if you ever wanted to measure something in between the two, like say, hey, I know this one has to be 400 thousandths up to do the same trick. Well, you know what? You better probably use a mill or something and do it right. And so that's why I take the time to do some of these things. Uh, for a lot of it's for measurement purposes also, but you know what? It looks better, but here you go. It came out pretty nice. I'm gonna whack it off right there. And I'm going to whack it off right there. Another haircut. Next, we'll be moving up to the front end and figure out how we're going to hold this thing. Because I really don't want to hold it with the A-arms and everything on it. I'm going to get that stuff out of the way. But I will show you these braces that we put in also. Now, this keeps it to where you can adjust it left or right on the center of the table. But also, when the front end comes off of it, this thing will be super stable. You know, it'll just be sitting there in the air. But we're going to make some adjustments after we actually get the front end cut off this thing. So when the new one's going in, I'll give you the reasons why we're doing that. Now, now it's all adjustable down here. I went and got some different things that I could put on here um, so I can move this around from car to car. Because I kind of just had myself stuck in a rut, you know, because basically I was just building our cars. So I loosened up the front end fixture, the stuff that was holding uh, the chassis by the spindles. I wanted to make sure that nothing was in a bind. And I wanted to make sure when I was bolting it down that it was in this kind of natural position. It actually looks pretty decent. Um, I went ahead and tightened up a couple of the bolts when I did this, and then I'm gonna check and see how level we are on the front end. Now I know if I'm holding that front end with the spindles like this, it's gonna be level, and that's exactly where these wheels need to be to obtain the 300 inch rule center line from the rear wheel center line to the front wheel center line. And this, I know for a fact, is what height the front wing has to be and its location from the spindle center line. So the other stuff I had for the other front ends, of course it doesn't work. So now I'm gonna to have to fab some stuff up because I wanna hold this front end up here and center it without these control arms and stuff. So I know what the height is. Now I can make the fixture to go to that front end. So when I chop off all those frame rails behind it, it's just gonna be sitting there in the wind like nothing happened to it. So this old jig table I got, it has a bolt hole every six inches square throughout the whole table. So when you're making a jig fixture or something like that, if you just poke some holes down through something six inches apart, pretty sure you're gonna line up with something somewhere. So anyway, I made this piece. And then I got some a uh, couple pieces of angle, some one inch tubing, and I just started snapping this thing on here and I'm just gonna hold that front end up. So all this fixture stuff is scrap from, you know, some other job or whatever it may be. And that's why you always keep a piece of metal that is over two inches, I do, because at some point I'm probably gonna use the damn thing. So the way this is holding it, it's gonna establish the height, it's gonna establish the back, how far back it goes, with the bolt on the front also, but how level it is. So I'll get this all tacked up 
The last piece what I'm gonna put on is a flat bar that goes in between the uprights. And what that's gonna do is gonna keep it from side to side. So I'm gonna now weld that onto what I just made and that will keep it centered on the table. You know, here we are, you know, we got uh, about eight hours in this thing so far on this whole project. And hell, we haven't even cut a tube yet, let alone welded tubes together that actually go on the car. This is all just fixture work. What's gonna be nice though, is that this stuff uh, will go along with other cars and that kind of thing. So you just kind of got to take one for the team uh, on this first one, but we'll get it all knocked out here. So the next thing I'm going to do once it's all welded and everything, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to support the center of these rails. Now, here comes the fun part. Let's chop up a perfectly good front end on a car that goes 330 miles an hour, and we're going to throw it in the trash can. That sounds like fun. I always look and see what happens to the pipe after you cut it. Now this one, man, I have to yard up on it. So that thing you know, wants to be pushed down. So that kind of tells you how the car's working. If you really sit there and think about it, where does this pipe naturally want to be? And when it's welded up and everything, it wasn't that tough to get it in there, I don't believe, unless it was. And somebody just went ahead and welded it. Well, it's not all perfectly straight and all that other kind of stuff, but the lower rail will tell me a little bit more. Got a surprise visitor from old Chris Newton. He's the car chief on Clay Milliken's car. He came by to see me. That, that was pretty awesome. It was a great surprise. So I'll finish this thing off with the old jigsaw here, and guess what? Boom. Yep, the rail wants to be out. It tells a story. You just got to look at it. Part three coming up.